Okay, so I'm going to try in this video to show you how to analyze an ultrasound video that's been captured for the purpose of uh, doing a flow meter dilation test or another test that requires both Doppler and a constant measurement of the diameter of the vessel. Um, so what we're going to do here is take a video. Um, so we have this video file here that was recorded in um, LabChart Pro uh, using the PowerLab hardware. And um, this is of a brachial artery during a flow media dilation or FMD test. Um, so one thing I do want to note here is that um, to use the software we're going to use to analyze the video, we need to convert it into uh, a lossless AVI file. Notice here we have a Windows Media file. And the file size is relatively small. Uh, it's not a small file, but it's compared to what we're going to have, it's, it's a pretty small file. Um, so in order to convert it, I you just use this free um, video converter. It's a Lewo video converter. Um, and I've uh, chosen their uncompressed AVI file. And I do this, um, make sure it says lossless. I do it in 30 frames per second uh, because that's what the analysis program is expecting to see is 30 frames per second. Uh, so you just take the video, so you take it, drag it right in. Um, let it do its thing and then hit the conversion button. Um, so I'm not going to bother converting it because I've already done so. So let me stop this. Um, and so that's what I have here is the converted version of this same video file. So if you notice, this is 10.3 gigabytes. So it's a really big file where, again, the original was not even a single gigabyte, uh, not even a half a gigabyte. Um, so uh, doing this does make really big, uh, really big video files. So you don't want these files just sitting around. I suggest keeping the original as an original copy, and then after you analyze this larger file, um, I would delete it just so you don't fill up the space on your hard drive. Um, some people ha I have seen some people who use this uh, method to analyze ultrasound videos who essentially crash computers. Um, because they don't clear off the, the old video files of this type, these larger ones that they don't need anymore. All right, so in order to analyze this, so let's just make it so we don't see all this. So we're going to analyze this video. We're going to use this program here. It's a sheer ultrasound.exe. Um, and this, uh, a little background on this, this program was designed and um, edited by uh, faculty, well, by researchers at uh, Missouri, University of Missouri, as well as University of Delaware. Um, so I did my doctorate at University of Delaware, so I'm still using this um, ultrasound video analysis software, um, but that's where it's come from. I'll also put a link uh, in the description of this video on YouTube to the uh, to a, a, a paper that I've published that used this, just so you have some reference to where this is coming from. And you would have to follow the links or follow the references within that paper to get to the original source. I don't remember what the original source is that we, we cite off the top of my head. Um, but anyway, so to run this file, it does need to be run um, as an administrator. So for me, that means right-clicking the uh, file icon and clicking this run as administrator. And your computer is going to ask you if this is OK. Just hit yes. All right, so let's make this big. So this is what the video analysis program looks like. And so again, this uh, has ties to the University of Delaware, which is why this sort of stock photo here uh, says University of Delaware. But let's input in the video that we have here. Um, so we're going to go up to this white arrow and hit, uh, hit run. That's going to bring up this dialog to go and uh, find the video. So let's just browse the video. And here it is. So double click to open it. And this is the video we'll be analyzing. Unfortunately, the ultrasound I'm using does give you this sort of side and bottom part of the video screen when you record the video. So it does make the image as well as the Doppler signal a little smaller than what I would like, but it still does the job. All right, so the first thing that you'll do is you want to come in here and draw a, a box over the portion of the vessel that you want to analyze. Um, so I'm right now I'm making edits to the box. I'm shifting it around a little bit. 
So let me get, there we go, okay. So we have this green line here in the center, that's supposed to be in the middle of the vessel, and then you wanna see these two red lines tracking the vessel wall. So this bottom one's tracking well, this top one's not tracking well. So let's see if I can adjust this to uh, make it pick up the correct vessel walls. There we go, right now it's correct, uh, picking up the right walls, um, so that's what you wanna see. So um, it just requires a little fiddling around, make sure you don't have any noisy sections or any other uh, lines that it's picking up as a potential vessel wall before it was picking up um, this line here. Um, and you can also adjust this a few different ways. So you can adjust it by changing the minimum edge strength of the lower or upper portion of the window. So lower being, being below the midline and upper being above the midline. Um, so right now it's set to seven, which is pretty sensitive. So it's gonna pick up any little line it sees. You can uh, increase this or decrease it as needed. I think 7 to 20 is usually a pretty uh, good range to keep these in. So let me just change it to 20 real quick. Um, it should give us a little less noise as we're um, analyzing the video, but it is uh, slightly less sensitive that way. Um, so we have our box drawn. We've uh, adjusted our upper and lower uh, minimum edge strength to make sure that the box is going to hopefully pick up the vessel the entire time. Um, we can also... Um, go through, so this particular video is 1,388 frames. Um, we're on frame one, so the current frame is frame one. So we can go through a handful of frames here and see um, if it's picking up the vessel um, uh, still to our liking um, throughout the video. So I'm on a video of frame 500, it's still picking up the vessel wall as well. Um, let's just do this a handful of times. So. <clears throat> It's got to 1,000, and so this is actually a partial video, I believe. Um, there was an issue when I went to um, convert it. So normally it would be a lot more than 1,388 frames, but I've already analyzed this video, so we'll just use this partial video, and then I'll show you the next part of the analysis as if we analyzed the full video. Um, so for this, um, the couple checks that I've done, so I did a 500, a 1,000, let's just do 1,300, and we'll call it good enough for now. Um, and for all of those, it's picking up the vessel walls well. Um, there's the no movement of the vessel where the vessel uh, is going up or down on the screen, so we don't have to adjust, so all that is looking good. So let's go back to the first frame. Okay, so I'm just hitting, uh, typing it in, hitting enter, or you can just type it in and click off. Either one will work. All right, so <clears throat> now we need to calibrate the B mode section of the ultrasound video, which is this section here where we drew the box so far. All right, so if you look, there's a scale on the side of the video. So this scale is three centimeters long. So I'm gonna change this here to be three centimeters. So 3.0, click off. Okay, so it's three centimeters. Now I'm gonna hit this calibrate button. It's gonna ask me um, to pick out a few points. So you wanna be as precise as you can about this. So first I'm gonna pick the top of the scale. So I did three centimeters, so I'm gonna draw the whole scale here. So I, I clicked, I drew this little green X there, um, and then I'm gonna click OK. Now I'm gonna click on the bottom of the scale. So the bottom of the scale is here next to the three, and I'm gonna click OK again. And what it does is it determines how much um, distance each pixel is worth, and then you have this value here, which is centimeters per pixel. Um, so that will make it so that you get an accurate uh, diameter measurement later on. All right, so our diameters are ready to go, but we still need to work on the Doppler signal, um, which is this portion of the video down here. So this does not show the um, region of interest automatically. You have to click this Show Doppler Region of Interest, or ROI, button, and you can see this yellow um, box pops up. So what we need to do now is... Um, using these controls here, we need to adjust this yellow box to make it fit our Doppler signal. Um, so we need to adjust um, up and down as well as side to side on the four walls of the box to make sure that it's in line with the four walls of this uh, region of the Doppler signal. So let's do that real quick now. So this left pixel, you can either do it this way by simply clicking a a handful of times until you get it in line with the edge of the uh, area where the
the dot there is displayed so that it looks good for the left. Um, you can do the same thing for the right, or if you want, you can always just type in here. So let's just say 450 and see where that gets us. So pretty close, and then I'll just use the arrows to get it all the way to where the start of the axis ticks are. Oops. Hold on there, I clicked. There we go. I'm going to have to draw this box back. I accidentally clicked off. Sorry about that. Okay, so back to where that was. All right, so now we have the left side and the right side in a good position for the Doppler region of interest. Um, let's uh, uh, adjust the top and the bottom. The top is actually pretty much uh, right on where it needs to be, so I don't think I'm going to adjust that. Um, there is a couple of ticks here. They're a little small, small and hard to see. Um, I do think uh, if you're able to get rid of these sort of side panels, of your video screen that you'll get more um, uh, you'll get more uh, pixels that represent uh, these scales so it'll be a little easier to see and you'll get a little higher quality um, video file that way but this is where it needs to be so let's adjust the bottom though the bottom not even close so the bottom oh, wrong way so I'm gonna do the same thing let's go up until it gets onto the edge of the Doppler region so again, you can just keep clicking, or if you have a, if you want to do a guesstimate, you can just type in a number and then click to get it exactly where you want it. But that looks good there. All right, so the four walls of this yellow Doppler region are where we want them to be, though. This middle yellow bar here is supposed to be on the zero line, which it's not right now. So the zero line here, you can see there's this gray light gray line going across where my mouse is going across right now. That is the zero line that you want this yellow line to be on. Um, so you don't adjust that with any sort of manual controls. What you do is once the outer edges of the boxes are where they should be, you need to tell the program what the maximum value of this scale is here and what the minimum value of this scale is here um, relative to where you put your box. Um, so this maximum here, so it does say negative 300, but it's just because um, the way we had to probe that day, it, it gave us negative values instead of positive values. Um, that's irrelevant. The point is the top of the scale is in, in the positive always, and the bottom is always going to be in the negative. So let's see. I would say about 320 for the top end of the scale, so let's just type 320 here. All right, so we got us a little closer. What's the bottom? Maybe negative 60. So let's change this. So again, uh, I ignored the the positive and negative on the scale just because it's a mat it's just a matter of where you had of what direction you had the probe when you put it on the body. Um, so we could have done a, a little better job here, making sure it was giving us a positive signal. But it doesn't really matter when you do the analysis because you're just going to tell it that this top number is positive and the bottom number is negative, regardless of what the scale says. All right, so I put what I, I could tell was the, the top and the bottom of the scale. Now that got us exactly where we wanted to be, this yellow line is on top of the gray line. So our Doppler region of interest is good. Our, we'll click off this. The, um, the region of interest on the uh, B mode, so of the diameters, good. We already saw that earlier. Sometimes it does disappear, these internal lines, but um, it'll come back once we start processing, and this part is good. So let's hit process now. And you can see it is tracking. It is tracking the line or the lumen walls here. And it's also, if you look really closely, you can see some red and some yellow dots here. That's tracking the Doppler signal. So if we we can watch this uh, this part of the uh, software, or we can watch this part, which is showing the uh, changes with each heartbeat in the diameter of the vessel, as well as you can see the Doppler tracings being uh, picked up here. Um, so once you're done, and this usually takes a little while. Uh, typically, you want um, probably an eight minute or so video to do an FMD. Um, so it's going to take some time. I, I think this is probably only a couple minutes here. So it's going through this progress uh, bar here a little faster what, than what it normally would. Um, so while you're analyzing, if you ever see an issue, let's say you lose the vessel wall for some reason, you can always hit stop processing. 
and you want to do this minimally, but you can adjust the um, this box a little bit. You can shrink it in to get it off some noise. Um, you could, if you had to, you can move it to a different location, but you're going to get different values if you do that, so you really don't want to unless you absolutely have to. But you can also adjust these minimum edge shrinks for the upper and the lower as you're going if need be. The least, uh, well, the best method is to do it as little as possible to make it stay on the, the vessel. Because anytime you adjust any of this, you're going to get slightly different values and you want to avoid that if you can. Um, but at this point, I'm going to stop this because we don't need to run through this whole thing um, because I already have this analyzed. But once you're all done, so let's say you're watching this screen. Once it's all done, it's automatically going to pop to this results screen. And you have this button here that says save the file. You just click that. It would ask you where you want to save it. And you would just hit OK. And it saved the data that came out of that. And then at that point, you can hit this end button. And if you want to do another, um, another ultrasound video through the software, you could at this point just hit the white arrow and start again or you can just close out of the program, which is what we're going to do here. All right, so here's the file that it um, wrote. Um, just open that so you can see what that looks like. So it's a text file, and Excel is throwing up an error right now because it's, it not, it's not used to seeing the text files, although I've made it associated with Excel. So um, it's okay, though, if you get that error, just allow it to open. So you have here a lot of information. You have the frame, so how which frame it was, you have the sample time, you have the diameter of the vessel during that frame, you have the upper and the lower Doppler. So this is the bottom of the Doppler. Um, the lower is the bottom of the Doppler, the upper, the up Doppler is the top of the Doppler signal. So if you think of it like a, a wide crayon mark, one is uh, tracing the top of that crayon mark, the other is tracing the bottom of that crayon mark. So this program was originally designed to collect some other information during that same period of time. So I don't use any of this um, as for uh, my purposes. So I, it's just all these NANs, meaning there's no data there. So you can just ignore that. Um, then the last column here, this weighted mean Doppler value, that is the weighted mean Doppler of the upper and the lower Doppler signals. Um, notice that there are some NANs in these Doppler uh, signals. That just means at at that particular point in time, there was not um, there was no blood flow, so there's no blood flow detected. So you can think of this as a heartbeat right here, and then you have a period of no blood flow, and then maybe another heartbeat. In reality, this is actually probably the initial flow of the heartbeat, and then some backwards flow of the heartbeats. Um, and then this would be the time between heartbeats, essentially. Um, but regardless, not all that important for what we're doing today. I just want to show you a little bit about um, the file that comes out. So I'll close out of this. And let me get rid of this. And in here is where I'd already analyzed the file. So we have the same. Uh, results from the file. This is just for the entire um, tracing. So again, same thing you just saw, but for the entire uh, eight minutes or so of the video. And then what we would need to do here is load it into another file or another program that's going to analyze the, um, the results and turn it into a measurement of flow meter dilation with some other uh, secondary measurements uh, associated with that. So that's another program, so I'll pause right now and go do that for you.